Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're here for the 2023 Throat on the Mountain 11, presented by Sun King, along with Discraft. We're at the Grand Canyon Disc Golf Course, and we've got a great card here for you today. We've got our leaders, co-leaders, Morgan Linz, along with Natalie Ryan. Right behind them, Jordan Linz and Lauren Butler. It's our fourth round, and unfortunately, the bad news is going to come early, folks. No Ellen Widboom Shakalaka. I apologize. She is not here with me. She was more than willing and able to be here for the third round. However, the time ran out before she was hitting the tour come Monday morning and me getting everything ready to have her incorporated. So thank you so much, Ellen, for being here for our first two rounds and being a fierce competitor out there. And we'll see what you can do on the chase card today. But now we're here on hole one, just 231 feet, slightly uphill. On the tee... Again, our co-leader, Morgan Linz, who comes in at three over par after two rounds. She's all tied up here with Natalie Ryan, who's also three over. Nice shot. Thank you. And if that stayed on top, they might both have good looks from on top of the hill. Ride. Jordan Linz coming in. Off the pace, she's at 11 over, but has a four-stroke advantage over this woman, Lauren Butler, who's joining us on our lead card here for the final round. Feels as if it's a two-woman race at the moment, but we have seen that anything can happen out here on this course, especially with the fact that 18 is, of course, looming for our final hole competition. And at this point, I think we've seen everything between a 3 and a 12 had on hole number 18 within the division. So keep that in mind as we start to close in on that final hole. But first, Morgan is going to strike with the birdie. And just a few feet away as well, we have Natalie Ryan. So they match each other birdie for birdie on hole one. Later. <laughs> We're going to head over to hole two. Relatively straight shot. We can see that either you play a hyzer if you're a righty backhand thrower off to the left side, or you could try to punch this initial straight gap and go right up. There is an OB fence on that right hand side that we're now going along, and then a precariously case placed basket right here on the green of two. Morgan trying to play down so that she'll have a look from that left to right angle. And Natalie connects early. Yeah, We'll see just how close she is to her sister. Oh, and I like it. We haven't seen much of this. Lauren going straight up the middle. And she should have a clean lane to the basket. And that's the huge advantage. If you punch all the way through and get up to that top side, of course, you need to check up just short of the OB fence. But it should give her a clean look to the basket. And we saw that roll out at the last second, so likely obstructed on the green for Natalie. And that goes just past the basket, but then rolls down the hill somewhat. Still a putt that's within range. And you can see if you get far enough, that's when you can find these second or third windows out here that give you a relatively clean look to the basket. So I I think that's a great play coming in from this short tee. 
as Morgan's going to pitch right up, and she looks like she's going to have another drop in. Natalie forced to lay it up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Has to be the, the, the quickest. <laughs> one of the quickest changes of mind that then turns out to be successful. Often you see someone change their mind at the last moment and then something terrible happens. Uh, not for Lauren. Just going to switch it up and toss it in. So Jordan is in. Here's Morgan. And that's back to back birdies for Morgan to get started. But Terry, but Terry, what are the stats? Yeah, hole two actually did play as tied for the easiest hole on the course, uh, averaging .36 below par. So we saw three out of four collect birdies here from the lead card. Hole three, wow. Trying to land somewhere on this service road to then be able to toss straight ahead. You're gonna still have the low hanging branch that will protect you from the basket. And then an OB road, and well, actually barbed wire fence first, and then the OB road as well. Anything over the fence to the right is out of bounds. Jordan's worried about it being early. Yeah, you you would definitely rather push this one too straight or too far, in my opinion, as opposed to coming up short and not making it around the bend. And then Natalie will likely be on that backside wall. And that's a really smart play. It's easy to get aggressive there. Next thing you know, that either cut rolls or maybe you get the nose up. And then it just actually will hyzer out over the fence. There's just so much trouble that you can get into there. And that is trouble right there. So no forward progress, or essentially none, so to speak. Let's see what Jordan can do now, and she's just going to pitch it right out into the center of the road. Lauren. Looking to do the same. That needs a set. Oh, that's... Okay, not too bad. Had that rolled a little bit more back toward her, that would have seemed very unfair. And so Natalie checked up short of the backside wall, and now we'll have a standstill. She really just needs to beat the tree, that center tree there. You want to go just inside of that with a righty backhand shot, and... That is low and into the side of the hill, so likely taking herself out of birdie range. And that's the tree I speak of. You you can go to the right of it, clearly. However, you need to make sure that it's has a decent amount of finish to it back to the left. There's so much to be said about practicing a standstill shot with uneven footing and or loose rocks and things of that nature. And I, I know you wouldn't think, well, man, I really going to go out and look for some place to do that. But you should. Uh, it was a highly skilled shot that we just saw from Jordan. So Natalie has somewhat of a ceiling to deal with, and that's going to be 
right next to the pin and a tap in par. Lauren wants no part of giving it a bid. Jordan for bogey. Cashes it. Nice putt. Now we've got Morgan here. She's trying to save her par. And she does just that. A pretty solid start for Morgan. Two birdies and a par in the first three holes. And Natalie's going to tap in for par as well. So she'll remain one behind Morgan as they head over to the Tia 4. Just up the hill, a few feet away. And 4 has the open space here. That's the easy part. But you want to come in, especially if you're throwing a righty backhand shot, I feel like you want to come in right about where the drone is, actually. Right now, you come in just a bit short, possibly get a skip or two up toward the basket. Of course, you have those three or four guardian trees you're trying to avoid. Or you go forehand, you get a little anti-skip, and still gives you a long look. That'll work out well for Morgan. Here's Natalie, and this looks short and left, but it does get a pretty good skip straight ahead. Jordan opting for the backhand that needs some more stability. Well, the, the, the tree will help that stability result, although it's not going to make the disc any more stable, that's for sure. Lauren with the right line. Does it have the power? Not too bad. That'll give her a look. <laughs> and you see that Jordan immediately motioning that she'd like that to sit down whenever it comes in contact with the ground. So easy for these to pop up and roll away from you. Oh, nice. What a putt by Morgan. And just like that, after four holes, she's brought herself to three under on the first four holes. I look at what she did in round number two through the first four holes. She played it even. And in round one through the first four holes, she played it one over. And Natalie will answer with a birdie of her own. Natalie played the first four holes even par in round one and played the first four at one under in round two. So feels as if everybody's starting to figure things out a little bit. And we're going to go over to the blind hole number five. Big thanks to our friends over at the Distinguished Doodle. Make sure you reach out if you need any of your dog or pet care products. All organic ingredients made right in Arizona. They support disc golf. If you've got any kind of dog, it doesn't have to be a doodle. Uh, if you have any kind of dog, you should certainly reach out. And if you use the code DISCGOLFGUY, 20% off your entire order is coming at you. So the distinguisheddoodle.com, the link is in the description. And that's a Good-looking hyzer that'll give her a long look, probably from circle two. And that's going to be a pretty similar position there for Natalie. And as many of you already know, Paul Macbeth, along with Dylan Cease, have bought this property. And one of the running jokes were throughout the weekend was that this is the last time you're going to see hole five played this way. He likes a lot of the holes the way they are out here, a few pin and a few T adjustments, but this hole entirely will be gone. Uh, it's not his favorite hole. That tree directly in front of Lauren, he says, just feels like it's a little too lucky as to if you get through it or not. And there's some beautiful land as you're looking at a 12 o'clock position from right here. There's some beautiful land that is completely untouched. 
So that is going to be it factored into part of the new design. Oh, from downtown. Way back. Natalie Ryan, a huge putt. And for the time being, that's going to knot her up with Morgan. Morgan to answer, not quite. So both Natalie and Morgan through five holes are looking at three under. They're both back to even par on the weekend. Here's Jordan. Online, but short on her effort. And you're noticing probably virtually no wind at this point. There's been some throughout the weekend. It's come and gone a little bit. We either hear it or you can see it sometimes on the coverage. But right now, virtually no wind. It's pushing about 1130, almost noon on Championship Sunday for us as the women are out here competing. And out of Florida, we've got our friends Double G and the Double G Jerky Factory. I'm going to be giving tons of jerky away throughout the entire year. I already have been, and it's going to continue. Hole 6 is a par 4, 694 feet and to this protected green. One that you can be usually pretty aggressive at if you're attacking the basket from out in the fairway. And finding the short grass is paramount here. Now, the short grass has widened. In the last few years, they're starting to make it a little bit easier and a little more forgiving, but finding the short grass is certainly the key ingredient here to getting a good score. And that is a great shot by Morgan as well. We'll see what Lauren can do. Jordan also out in the short grass, and Lauren as well. So four well-placed shots. This is a little bit of a bonus birdie on in our FPO division because now you're looking at at least 300 feet to the pin. It's blind and slightly elevated green. And not exactly the best effort there by Morgan. I know with the Masters right around the corner, you have heard stories about how they pipe in various sounds into the broadcast, and you'd think maybe I've been doing that throughout the weekend. I haven't. I think somebody told me what's going on with the birds out there, but I am, I'm no Madison Walker, so... <laughs> We're going to have to call her in to uh, find out exactly what's all taking place out there. But it seems pretty peaceful overall. That's going to be on the short left side for Natalie. Ultimately trickles down. That's going to give her a look. Oh, and a beautiful shot by Lauren. Also will give her a long look. We'll see if that got all the way into the bowl. Sometimes that sawgrass on both the left and right sides that protect this, we've seen throughout the weekend in various coverage of that sawgrass. If you get down beneath that, it essentially will make it a completely blind shot to the basket. Clearly not a problem here for Lauren as she is past it, but that was her par attempt. And a bogey likely being tacked onto her scorecard now. Here's Natalie, who did get past it as well, but doesn't take advantage. So Natalie's going to be putting her first bogey on her scorecard here today.
Morgan with an opportunity to pull ahead by a stroke. And doesn't quite connect from that right side. So it looks like they will match one another with bogeys here on six. Jordan's going to card the lone par of the group. Well, six did play as the fifth most difficult. There were zero birdies on six throughout the day. It averaged 4.73, so nearly three-quarters of a stroke over par. And if you want to get yourself under par, especially when it comes to knowing all things disc golf, check out theplayersmeeting.com. They've got a great newsletter. Go out there, subscribe to it. They'll send you an email giving you updates, articles that get written. All thanks to our friends over there at the players' meeting. And now we're here on hole number seven, 269 feet. Chopped down, but in the center of the fairway. Oh. <laughs> little holding of the breath there. You heard Natalie say that she yanked it over, but then it hit a tree. It was going to carry the correct way, then bounces back. Oh, no. Rolling backward, but then eventually sits down. Oh, we didn't even see that one. This may be even outside a circle, too. Uphill. And Natalie doesn't really get all the way to the basket. Still a makeable putt, but this is a very dangerous green. Now we're seeing what Jordan can do with it. That should work. I believe Lauren is a fresh new member of Team Millennium. Seen her last time I had seen her. She was sponsored by Legacy. It looks like Millennium is her new sponsor here, at least in 2023. Yes. Bang, bang. Way downtown. Nice putt by Morgan. That's going to bring her back to even overall and three down on the round. And Natalie can't answer and save the par. And this will be at least a two-stroke swing between the two of them. So just a few moments ago, we saw them on, all knotted up, and now Morgan and Natalie... Two-stroke advantage in Morgan's favor. Well, seven average right in the middle of the field, so to speak. And Morgan, the only competitor in the entire division to cash in the birdie here during round number three. So congrats to her. If you need any discs, beef jerky, maybe a disc golf guy hat, or any of the my disc in a box shipping mailers to safely and securely ship discs around the country all well being recyclable you can find those all on shop.thediscgolfguy.com i appreciate any support over there if you purchase any products morgan with the honors and a two-stroke lead just lacing it perfect Thank position you. here on the t of eight And that also looks good. Jordan, obviously, the 
person who threw it in during the 2022 campaign out here. I don't think anyone could forget that. So in similar position now. Now we see Lauren also out in good position. Up until this point, we've seen zero birdies here on eight as our lead card steps up. And if you're just trying to turn this into a par, or, well, textbook by Lauren. <laughs> and as she said, trying to pull the magic that we saw from Jordan last year. And that'll work out just fine. Up and over, no problem there for Morgan. And this right side, both the right and the left side, are very difficult to get out of because you have to go uphill as well as navigate through some of the rough. And that did not work out well for Natalie with the kind of sharp forehand roller she was attempting. Now uphill. Deep in circle, too. Just barely off the rim. You inch is short. So we're going to see even more separation, it appears, as we're watching Jordan tap in for the par. Hole eight was birdie-less on the day. See the bogey by Natalie. In fact, I'm going to follow it up and say hole eight was birdie-less on the weekend. I just checked all three rounds, thanks to our friends at pdj.com. There was no FPO birdies on eight. I'd love to see maybe a new tee. And big thanks to our friends over at Swarm Digital Marketing. You've seen them up in the right-hand corner of all the previews. They can help you guys out with any of your website needs primarily. Uh, search engine optimization, SEO as it's called. They can also help you out with logos, website design, website maintenance. So if you're a, a small to medium size or even large size operation and you're looking to make sure you get your website and all of your needs up to speed, reach out to our friends at Swarm. They've supported coverage last year and they're supporting our coverage this year and I very much appreciate them. There's a link. If you click on that, it'll bring you right to them. That's in the description. And a beautiful shot there. Looks like center fairway. Hole nine, never a treat, as Lauren is probably going to experience. A little bit of a kick, but things can get squirrely very quickly out here on hole nine and that is as, about as good as she could ask for sometimes you don't want to get too aggressive out here that's when something gets up and rolls all the way down to the fence or you hit another tree and you're buried twice as far if you're out of position on nine take your medicine there's there's my pro tip on the day And nine's only had, up into this point, just one birdie on the entire weekend as well. So pars do not hurt you here on nine. <laughs> and a sigh of relief by Jordan. Lauren saying, I'm going to concede to the bogey and not turn it into a double or a triple, which can happen easily. This is Natalie for par. Oh, 
on the left side. Doesn't stick. So Natalie has struggled on the last. Let me look at the scorecard. I believe that's the last four holes. I think we've seen bogeys here from Natalie. Six, seven, eight, and now nine. And just like that, Morgan is in. And you think back, three holes ago, they were all tied up. Now Morgan and Natalie, a four-stroke difference in Morgan's favor. Jordan's going to step up for the par. And I'm going to send a big shout-out to my friend Dylan over there at Pastry Dyes, hustling around, giving us the action. Like, share, subscribe. Do all the YouTube things. I've got Double G Jerky to give away. Big thank you to my Patreon subscribers, helping us bring in all the footage. And as I said, four strokes separate the two. Just nine holes left to play. Thank you guys for joining. We'll see you guys for the exciting conclusion in the back nine at Throat on the Mountain.